Welcome to the Mayor's Spotlight podcast episode. I'm your host, Mayor Blake Margolis. Every month, I pick a topic of interest and provide you with a deep dive into what's going on in your hometown. And this month, I am interviewing your Director of Engineering and Interim Director of Public Works, Jeff Cohen. We're discussing and reviewing active and upcoming major thoroughfare roadway projects. Welcome to the show, Jeff. So a lot of people have been talking about traffic in the city, and so I'm sure that a number of people will be tuning into this month's Mayor Spotlight. So before we dive into this month's topic, can you briefly share your background and what your vital role is in the city of Rowlett? I, I came out of Penn State as an engineer, uh, worked in Pennsylvania for many years designing landfills, came to Texas to do some municipal engineering, worked uh, as a land development consultant for many years. Then I went to the city of Midland as an assistant city engineer uh, for about six years, came back to the Metroplex uh, and served this, this city, Rowlett, uh, for a number of years as an assistant city engineer uh, until I uh, have worked my way up to uh, the current, my current roles as a director of engineering and interim director of public works. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty heavy load you have, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I've got several projects I would love to provide our citizens with either a status update, a timeline, scope. Um, so let's work our way down the list. We've got a lot going on in Rowlett, uh, as you're well aware of. Yes. So one of the big projects that is currently going on right now um, that's caused some traffic disruption due to construction scheduling uh, is Miller Road between the railroad tracks and Dowrock Road. Can you um, explain to the citizens watching what the scope of this project is and the timeline for completion? This current this phase of the Miller Road project uh, is phase two. It extends between Dalrock Road and uh, just east of the railroad tracks at Glen Hill Drive. It is going to take the existing two-lane asphalt roadway and rebuild it as a four-lane divided concrete roadway. There are also some intersection improvements at Chiza that extend both north and south from Miller. Uh, there are, are drainage improvements. The current roadway is served by surface ditches, bar ditches, and uh, those will be taken underground and uh, a storm system will be constructed, has been constructed. Uh, there's also some water line that has been reconstructed uh, due to its age and a uh, good opportunity to get in there and, and redo that water line. And uh, a very small nominal amount of sewer main is also being reconstructed or has been reconstructed. So this will be, th so this road, Miller Road, when it's reconstructed, it will have a median down the middle, correct? That is right. So, and then um, the street lights as well, because there's currently no street lights. That there will be Miller street Road. lighting and, yeah. and some nominal landscaping on the medians, yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a big uh, benefit to the area in moving traffic. Mm -hmm. And and usually when I bring this project up, some people say, well, what about the Miller Road Bridge? That's two lanes, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you go from Miller and PGBT, which is four lanes, to two lanes, and now you're back to four lanes. So... Can you explain why this is just a part of a bigger process uh, and, and also that what, what we're currently planning on with the Miller Road Bridge, um, I'll say that um, this year the city council uh, allocated uh, over $2 million to match the Dallas County Capital Improvement Project, uh, $2 million to fund design and engineering. So can you explain a little bit of what's going on with the Miller Road Bridge, uh, what you'll be looking to doing now, now that we so have the money? Yes, now that we have some money uh, that could be allocated to a design, we'd like to get that, that roadway under design. That, that would extend, as you described, between George Bush Turnpike and uh, the, the end, the western end of, of this project uh, that will create a Miller Road um, <clears throat> corridor, uh, concrete four-lane divided corridor between Dow Rock and the western limits of the city of Rowlett. Um, so that, that bridge piece will be the last piece of, of that construction, that project. It was conceived many years ago. I, I don't know the exact date, but it was more than 10 years ago that, oh, yeah. that, uh, that this was conceived. And 
as as you pointed out, uh, there is now some construction money or some design money that that has been allocated both by you, the council, and uh, the Dallas County. Uh, we can get that under design, and then once it is designed, that's going to be quite an expensive project. Mm-hmm. Can you Do, can you give like a rough estimate? I know some people will be asking. Um, we we think it's in in the ballpark of fifty million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the bridge, uh, at least the westbound, I'm sorry, the eastbound lanes will likely be uh, a bridge entirely spanning the lake, much like the 66 uh, does Two mile. today. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, it, so that that is going to be quite expensive, mm-hmm. an undertaking. And we think that uh, once we can get this designed, uh, we can we can find some other other funding sources grants for example uh, to help with the, the construction right. yeah and I'll explain to the people watching that um, the reason why there's been no progress to date is because uh, previous council uh, never had the ability or never did allocate design funding to the project and so this really when you're wanting to get major, funds from the federal government or state government uh, via grants um, or other allocations, they they like to uh, invest in shovel-ready projects. Um, That is their preference. And when you have a shovel-ready project, um, the likelihood of you getting funding has greatly increased. Um, And so it was strategic for council to go ahead and and, and uh, fund the design. That way we can get closer to shovel-ready. And so by the point that we're shovel ready, we'll be able to go in and really lobby hard for federal dollars. Uh, so that way we can, you know, uh, get funding from the North Central Texas Council of Governments uh, and potentially TxDOT, depending on what kind of available grants there are out there. Um, so it, it is going to take years and years uh, before we actually break ground on that project. Um for reference, the Miller Road um, bridge structure that was uh, built recently um, between Dexham Road and Centerville uh, took about 15 years of planning, um, just that small bridge. So uh, projects like this take a long time. Uh, the, the Really, uh, it's, it's a lot of the funding, getting the funding allocation, and then also going through right-of-way acquisition process. And since this is over a lake, uh, that will uh, be another complexity that um, will take time to get through. So, you know, really, this is just about... <laughs> I know people don't want to hear it, but the, but the word patience, yeah. um, because it, it, it's, it's government... Things take a while, naturally. Uh, and since there's going to be extensive design and engineering for this project, it will, it will take a while uh, before we get shovel ready. Uh, but the, the good news is that <clears throat> this is the first time we're making true progress on this project. Um, as we were before, it's just been a lot of talking about what to do. Yes. Now we're putting money toward it to really get it going. Thank you. So uh, the next project um, is, <clears throat> which will, I think, occur uh, after the Miller Road between uh, the railroad tracks and Dow Rock, which is Chisa Road between Miller and Dow Rock. Can you explain what the scope and timeline of this project is? This project is very similar to Miller Road. Uh, there's a, an existing asphalt road, two-lane asphalt road, uh, surface drainage. Runs between Dow Rock and Miller and uh, <clears throat> we are going to reconstruct that into a four-lane concrete divided roadway. It'll have median street lights, of course. Um, <clears throat> there'll be some, uh, some utility reconstruction as well. Uh, never pass up an opportunity to go in and, and do some reconstruction of some aged utilities when, when you're going to resurface or rebuild a road. Uh, and uh, the Right now, we are in uh, the right-of-way acquisition process uh, to acquire the necessary right-of-way needed to to build this road um, and widen it. We expect 
uh, construction after we we do some utility coordination, franchise utilities, the the telecommunications, uh, the power company, the gas company, uh, to get them to move their lines, which it can take a while. Uh, we expect construction to be to start sometime in the in the uh, third quarter of uh, fiscal year twenty four, maybe the fourth quarter. And it's probably going to be a 18-month project, just like Miller Road. So that's about when the Miller Road project will complete, is about that same time frame. Is that correct? Or I see the Miller Road project, it's about the same time, but I think it will be done a little bit before. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's not that far. Um, in my mind, I just for some reason thought it was going to be longer than that. So that's... I think that's good news. I think we can we can do it. It it, it really is going to depend. the The design is is uh, at sixty percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're we're reviewing that design right now, and uh, I think we can we can finalize the design pretty quickly. But at the same time, uh, we should be able to get the utilities uh, to to begin planning and moving their facilities, so that by the time we're ready to start construction. Uh, they'll be out of the way and we can we can move in right away. Perfect. So this project also includes four lanes, median, curb, gutter, um, street trees, street lights, things of that nature. Is that correct? Same thing as Miller Road, like you said. Same thing as Miller Road. Yeah. There is one unique aspect to this. We are looking, uh, because this road, especially down near the Dalrock intersection, uh, passes through a, a, a rather historic uh, community uh, that's been affected by development in Rowlett for uh, many years. Uh, we want to look at um, memorializing, uh, monumenting uh, the the historic nature of that neighborhood and 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 the people who who lived there for so many years. Yeah, the the Garner and Fuqua family that you're speaking to um, were successful black farmers in the area and owned um, most of the land around there. And that was the farmland owned by that family. So that's another thing that I'd like to discuss in a future mayor spotlight sometime in the future, highlighting the history of that area. Yes. Um, So thank you for bringing that up. So another big project that uh, is currently underway, at least you can see some utility relocations Mm. um, is the Lakeview Parkway and Dow Rock Road. I know a lot of people are going to be, Probably upset about hearing this because they're like, oh my gosh, how much construction can you do in major thoroughfares, right? Right. We don't really control the timing. It's just how it happens. And um, we can't control when TxDOT starts a project and we can't control um, when another entity starts a project. But we're not going to stop our projects um, and slow progress down when it's going to cost more money in the long run if we wait. So um, can you explain a little bit about what this scope and timeline is of the Dow Rock Road and Lakeview Parkway intersection improvement. So this project started almost 10 years ago, I believe, as well. Uh, it, it was conceived at first by Rockwall County. Um, they they identified it as a, as a need. Uh, the Dallas County picked it up as well. After Dallas County got involved, TxDOT got involved, and uh, basically they've agreed to... to do the project um, with some with some uh, partnering in in funding uh, with the city. The city did fund most of the design, um, and so now uh, we TechStop bid the project out in May, and they are ready to get started. Uh, between uh, last year and now, we have been involved in trying to move our utilities out of the way, much like we are asking. Atmos and Encore and the like to move out of the way when we do Miller or Chisa Road or any other similar project. And so we've been doing that. We expect to be done this month with with that construction. Uh, but I believe Texod is going to move right in in late August and begin uh, mobilizing and, and setting up their, their project and begin that construction. Can you explain well, let me first explain kind of what the scope is, um, to my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's going to be two left turn lanes in all directions uh, in the intersection. So east, westbound, Lakeview Parkway, north and southbound, Dow Rock Road, and then w- at least one right turn lane in all directions. Uh, is that 
Is that correct? Is that what the project entails to your knowledge? That, 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 that's right. Um, one right turn lane in all directions. There is an existing right turn lane now as you head east on 66 towards Rockwell. Uh, that will be maintained, but they are adding through lanes. So, so mm -hmm. the current right turn lane will become a through lane. Yes. It will be continued on the, on the east side of the intersection yeah. for some distance. Uh, there are also some through lanes being added north and south on Dow Rock. So this is like the biggest benefit of the project, in, in my opinion, is the through lane uh, eastbound Lakeview Parkway uh, through Dow Rock. Mm -hmm. um, what we currently see now is that um, that third lane going eastbound is consistently wide open uh, during rush hour, and it creates blind spots for traffic uh, that are that is coming westbound wishing to turn into a development uh, south of Lakeview Parkway and it's a blind spot they pull out when they really shouldn't pull out and then they get t-boned hmm. um, and because of that lane is wide open but the rush hour the two lanes are just packed all the way down so hopefully this through lane will alleviate that issue uh, because you'll have all three lanes being utilized as a through lane and then when you get closer to Dow Rock, there will be a right turn lane to go southbound onto Dow Rock Road. Unlike this current situation where you have basically an entire lane, this entire stretch that dead ends and forces you to turn south uh, onto Dow Rock. Okay, I wasn't sure what you were getting at. Yeah. Now, now I understand what yeah. you're describing. That that outside eastbound left uh, right, right lane... Turn. Uh, is right only right now. It is and so right it only. does not get used right. for quite a stretch. It is being converted to a through lane. Yes, that's yes. that's and one of the biggest yeah. uh, improvements that we'll be getting from this is that we'll be able to push three lanes of traffic through the, through intersection. the intersection. It will continue for some distance and yeah. then merge. I think past neighborhood Walmart and then uh, it merges. Something like that, yes. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a pretty big deal. It's going to be a great... Great thing when it's done. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of, I, I'm sure there will be lane impacts throughout the project uh, I mean, in terms of you know, um, merging uh, due to construction. Mm -hmm. um, have you taken a look or have access to the traffic control plan? I I'm have, sure that's TxDOTS. It is TxDOTS. They have not shared it with me yet. Um, I plan to uh, ask for it uh, mm -hmm. This week yeah so hopefully we can get it soon so we can start pub you know Publishing. we can take a look at it and and share what, what when the traffic impacts will occur yes um and then do you have any timeline as to when this could be completed this project they have uh estimated early next year april march april or may okay march april or may of 2024 okay so the next project that we have uh, going forward is uh, right turn lanes. And this was funded out of the 2018 bond program. Mm -hmm. And so currently, um, well, I'm going to let you explain. That's why you're here. Can you explain where this project status is, why it's taking a while? Right away acquisitions are uh, right now the, the main holdup. There have also been some coordination issues uh, with TxDOT because these right turn lanes are either on a TxDOT frontage road or on a TxDOT highway. Um, so that in the past, the, the design issues have, have coordination issues have, have uh, taken longer than expected. Now we are in the, the acquisition phase and we've, uh, we've acquired most of the acquisition, most of the right away, uh, but uh, there still remains a few parcels that are needed and uh, those are still uh, in negotiation um, we are even uh, look looking at condemnation yeah so um, can you explain where these right turn lane projects will be so there's a group of three uh, at the intersection of George Bush Turnpike and Miller Road uh, there are one of those would be uh, going westbound on Miller, turning right north onto George Bush Turnpike, the frontage road. The other one would be coming east on Miller and turning right to go south on George Bush Turnpike. And then the third, inter uh, third right turn lane is coming south on George Bush, getting off the ramp 
and turning right westbound onto Miller Road. Yep. That's that's one group of three that we're looking at as as a group and as a as a contract construction contract that we would like to to bid and, and let. The second group <clears throat> involves two lanes, two right turn lanes. These are on uh, 66 Lakeview Parkway. Uh, <clears throat> one is on Rowlett Road coming south and turning right to go west on Lakeview Parkway. And the other is at Kenwood going west on Lakeview Parkway 66 and turning right uh, onto Kenwood. And um, I believe that we have now acquired those right-of-ways, those parcels, and can proceed with uh, letting. That's great news. So hopefully hopefully we can start soon on that group. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the group at Miller and PGBT, we're still waiting on some land acquisition, and it's going through the process of negotiations. And uh, hopefully those wrap up soon um, so that we can begin those projects as well. So uh, the other project, a uh, pretty big one that we've been working on for a long time, is the Merritt Road Interconnector. So can you explain the scope of this project and the timeline of where we're currently at on it? This is a new road that will connect the uh, Merritt Road as where it, where Merritt Road currently uh, dead ends at George Bush. Uh, it will continue from George Bush across Muddy Creek, and up to Chisa Road, where Chisa and Liberty Grove are right now. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a four-lane roadway uh, divided. It will include a bridge over Muddy Creek, um, and uh, there will be some, some nominal utility work that will come along with it. Uh, there will also be, uh, that's really if you don't mind me saying, a separate uh, construction project, a separate project altogether, which is a large 36, 30-inch pipe uh, water main that will follow that alignment. Um, that project may actually be built before the the roadway itself. Also, the, the roadway uh, currently... There are plans that a developer is moving into the area that wants to develop some lands east of George Bush. They have, uh, they will be building uh, about 1,100 feet of that new street um, at at their cost, and and then we will be building the remainder of that. Um, they can go ahead and start that when when they are ready. Our project is going to be delayed a little bit. Uh, we are currently at the 60% design level, but we are being funded. Part of this funding uh, source comes from the federal government. It's a surface transportation block grant. Uh, it's about $14 million, and that comes with some strings. Uh, those strings are an environmental uh, analysis, which are a little more stringent than what we would otherwise do uh, if we were simply uh, building our own roadway. And so... Uh, now we have signed an advanced funding agreement with TxDOT. TxDOT is the agency that is administering the, the funds from the federal government. And we have signed an advanced funding agreement with TxDOT. Uh, and now we can begin that uh, in-depth environmental study, which we expect to take a few years. And sometime in 27, 2027, uh, we think that will be uh, finished, and we are hoping and crossing our fingers that the permits that we need as a result of that study uh, will be a general nationwide permit that we can apply for relatively easily rather than an individual permit that would take a, a little longer to, to obtain. Uh, and once we get that permit, we should be able to begin construction. Mm -hmm. So this is when I said that um, it's government, things take time. And when you get a, a, a federal grant uh, in the amount of how much received, which was about $14 million, it's a pretty major amount, um, you have to do what they say in, in order to get that grant. And they're telling us that we need an environmental impact study. 
And that adds to our timeline, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, we would have had to come up with $14 million in another way somehow. Uh, and so it's good and bad news. The good news is that we got $14 million from the federal government. Um, the bad news is that we got $14 million from the federal government, and now we have to, <laughs> now we have to do a design <laughs> that yes. we didn't plan for. Right. Uh, but it, it, overall, it's a good thing that we got the money, and uh, that allows us to move forward. Um, there is a little bit of a, a minor funding gap um, in mm -hmm. that we're going to be working uh, on with Dallas County uh, to help us cover some portion of that funding gap and then right. the uh, hopefully putting it on the 2024 bond election to close that funding gap close so it. that the project is completely entirely funded and we can put a bow tie on it and then now focus on getting the design done and starting construction. So, Correct. Uh, that's, that's good. That road won't be finished till I'm in, when I'm out of here, I'm, I'll be gone, <laughs> but, uh, it'll be a great thing for the city of Rowlett and, uh, it, it, it's m much needed, much needed for a long time. So Liberty Grove, some people are going to have questions. What are we going to do with Liberty Grove? Um, that's something that, you know, we've thought about before and, and it, it really is a decision that will have to be made in the future, uh, by the future council as to what to do with that roadway, uh, whether mm -hmm. to keep it or abandon the abandon it. it, mm -hmm. it that's, that's a question that the future council will have to answer. So one of the most major projects impacting the entire city is Interstate 30. And everybody knows that when there is a wreck or there is construction that impacts lane closures or affects lane closures, where does everybody go? They come to Rowlett. And that's, that's the way through. Uh, it's the old, uh, that's the detour from 30 is coming into Rowlett, whether that's taking Miller Road or Lakeview Parkway or Liberty Grove, just to get east-west bound. Mm -hmm. So um, it, a lot of people, this is the result of a lot of people's concerns about traffic congestion um, is, is coming from Interstate 30 construction. So people are interested in knowing when this construction project, uh, at least phase one, which includes uh, the outer service lanes um, construction between Bass Pro and Dow Rock, and then the timeline for phase two, which is between Dow Rock and Horizon. So can Correct. you go into that a little bit? Yeah, fa phase one, seg what they call segment one, uh, will go from Bass Pro to Dow Rock. Um, currently, uh, they've, the, the eastbound frontage road is essentially complete and open. Uh, they are working now on the interchange at Dow Rock and I-30, as well as completing the westbound frontage road. Um, <clears throat> the interchange at I-30 and Dow Rock uh, involves a bridge over I-30, the I-30 main lanes uh, that is basically an extension of Sapphire Bay Boulevard, which uh, feeds currently, it, it's, it's the road that feeds up into the, the Bayside District from Sunset Boulevard down to I-30. That bridge is expected to be finished uh, this November, perhaps December. Um, and once that bridge is open, I spoke with the textile engineer this morning uh, it should allow movement of, of southbound Dow Rock either to go westbound on, on I-30 or to go eastbound uh, on I-30 to Dow Rock, I mean to, to Rockwall. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a, a fairly short-term uh, timeline right now. Uh, the rest of the project, uh, which is uh, improvements of the main lanes as well as the frontage road, and as I said, the eastbound frontage road is already done, uh, but the westbound remains to be completed. And the main lanes, all of that is expected to take uh, to, to occur all through 2024 uh, and be open for traffic uh, in, in late, very late 24. So it's, it's, this project is long needed. Um, it will uh, assist traffic flow uh, greatly in, in ways that I don't know that people quite understand or can grasp at this point uh, based on what you can't see. Mm -hmm. um, so 
what happens, the city of Rylett is responsible for responding to wrecks or any incidents on uh, I-30 between Bass Pro and Horizon, pretty large stretch of 30 that yes. we're responsible for. Uh, anytime there is a major wreck um, that involves lane closures, it gridlocks. Mm-hmm. It, that's just what happens. Uh, then traffic diverts into Rowlett, causing the traffic jam that people mm-hmm. see. Um this will allow for traffic to take the outer service roads, which are, I believe, four lane, three lanes or four. I think it's three lanes that allow for traffic flow. Good, good capacity. Yeah, good capacity on the service road, um, which, again, allows for additional traffic flow. And there are a number of times when, when our first responders are having to completely shut down the interstate because the wreck has just gone all over. It's just mm-hmm. ping-ponged. Yes. and has shut down the entire interstate. This also allows for traffic to continue to be moving. It may be slow moving, but at least it's not totally stopped, but moving on the outer service lanes right. uh, of the interstate. And so there will always be movement uh, with this. Uh, once this project is complete, there will always be movement um, for the east and westbound uh, mm-hmm. 30 traffic. Yeah, and and I think an important point currently the uh, the service road eastbound uh, only serves Dow Rock right now. Right. They have not opened the the through portion of that that service road. When the Sapphire Bay Boulevard bridge is complete, uh, that should also be opened, and so traffic should be able to move, uh, should be able to not be diverted onto Dow Rock, but be able to move back onto I-30 and continue onto Rockwall. Right. It'll, it'll, it, it's, it's going to be a much needed mm-hmm. project uh, and it'll be great when it's done. And so mm-hmm. when do you think, uh, did you say when phase two? I, I didn't say, okay. uh, but my understanding is it is a, about a four year project. They've, they've been working on it since earlier this year. So 2023, 20, that may be 27. So about when we're starting Merritt Road Interconnector, right? Possibly, <laughs> yes. Okay, so that'll be what we'll be looking forward to. Until then, um, late 24 is when phase one will be complete. That will assist greatly um, mm-hmm. as well. So, so, you know, over time, we'll start to have less and less traffic congestion in Rowlett. We'll never, we'll never completely avoid it. There'll never be a time when we, there won't be traffic uh but there are ways that we can help mitigate that and this is one of the ways that TxDOT mm-hmm. is helping us out um by expanding the miller road bridge to, to be sure yes. um expanding the miller road bridge and i-30 i mean i mean interstate yes. 30 bridge and hopefully one day the miller yes. road bridge yes. <laughs> yes um okay so the next one is discussing the future bond projects so in 2024 is our next slated uh bond election and we, uh, as a strategy, this city uh, conducts bond elections every three years. Um, the capacity that we will have uh, in the 2024 bond is, is somewhere above $50 million, $55, $56 million. Um, that allows, now keep in mind, we have $300 million in capital needs. Somewhere around that figure mm-hmm. is about what our needs are. So, um, it's it's this is the story of every city in the United States of America. There just isn't enough money, um, but we make the best with what we have, and so uh, we've made dr- dramatic progress over the last uh, few bond election cycles, and we're going to continue that progress through the twenty twenty four bond election, and so we're going to ask for the citizens to be engaged in that process and and stay tuned for more information. But for now, I want to talk about what are some potential projects that uh, could occur um, uh, that the capital improvement program task force is in the middle of considering. Considering. So there are some park projects, uh, uh, maintenance building that is is sorely needed. Um, A few other park projects. We are, we have a a meeting tonight as a matter of fact, Mm -hmm. and it is open to the public. uh, So, so people can come and, and, and observe and participate even. Yes, um, tune in to Rowlett.com to find those meetings. Um, there's also uh, public safety uh, maintenance uh, needed on, on some of the fire stations. And then there are road and alley projects that we need to look at. Um, we are 
going to present tonight a, a list of, of possible road and alley projects and uh, start the conversation is to prioritize uh, those projects. Not to mention what you've mentioned before about the, the uh, Merritt Road interconnector uh, and uh, maybe some other projects that are needed. Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the criteria that our Capital Improvement Program Task Force uses in, in ranking the projects is the Pavement Condition Index. Can you go in a little bit into that and what that is? It's a method of collecting data. Uh, used to be visual, um, purely visual, where uh, somebody or a team of somebody's would, would go and drive the roads and assess their condition based on a set of criteria uh, and and rate that uh, a, a particular length of, of roadway, uh, give, them the, give that a number based on a an index. Uh, zero to 100. Correct. Zero meaning the worst. Worst, 100, 100 being, the best. being the best. And... Um, now it is it is a process that can be collected digitally. We had somebody go uh, earlier and uh, drive these roadways and collect that data. They are now processing the data and uh, should be able to give us a a, uh, a listing of the indices uh, for all of the roads in Rowlett uh, in in a in a in a short period of time. So that basically to our, the public watching is, is to stay tuned to that process. Um, we'll have more information probably around February, March timeframe on, on what projects we'll be looking at, at funding and right. asking the citizens to vote for um, in the 2020, May 2024 bond election. So stay tuned to that because uh, there's a lot of needs that we have and there's more to do. And and this program that, you know, basically the, the things that we're discussing today are really your major thoroughfares, right? Mm-hmm. But there are so many other projects that are happening in neighborhoods and alleys all across the city. Um, and you can find that listing uh, on rowlett.com under the Capital Improvement Program um, webpage and you can find out what what current projects are going on, I'll ask Drew to include a link down below. <laughs> you got it, Mayor. <laughs> and so that way y'all have uh, the ability to go look at that. So thank you, Jeff, for your time and everything uh, that, that you do and your team does. Y'all have a really busy job. And uh, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Mayor Spotlight. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform so you don't miss an episode. If you have any questions or would like to submit a topic, please email us at podcast.rowlett.com and have a great day, Rowlett. <laughs>